a mess we would be in if not for the forgiveness of Jesus. What a mess the disciples would have been in after his Easter if Jesus did not forgive them for abandoning him during his passion. Like last Sunday, the gospel today is another account of Jesus risen from the dead, appearing to the disciples on Easter Sunday. But from a different perspective, from John's account last Sunday, the two disciples had met Jesus on the road to Emmaus and recognized him only after he had broken bread with them. Now they had returned to Jerusalem to tell others. And after they had shared their account of seeing Jesus, he now appeared to the entire group gathered together. Imagine the sense of shame the disciples must now feel for having abandoned Jesus during his passion. We too feel a sense of shame when we abandon Jesus when we sin. That is really what happens when we sin. We abandon Jesus. We choose something else above Jesus. We put Jesus in second place. Sin is always abandoning Jesus for something or someone else. So it's good when we are sensitive enough to recognize that we have abandoned Jesus and we feel a sense of shame and guilt. I feel it is good because when we have a sense of shame and guilt, we can turn to Jesus for healing. If we didn't have that sense, we would remain in a sorry state of having abandoned Jesus. But Jesus doesn't want us to remain in that state. He doesn't want his disciples to remain in shame and guilt. And so the first words to him, as we heard in the gospel are, peace be with you. His meeting with his disciples is really one in which he forgives them for having abandoned him. He comes to them again at, as the same familiar person. And so he shows them his wounds in his hands and feet. Naturally, they would have wondered about those wounds. He had eaten many meals with them. And now, once again, he eats a meal with them. Whatever piece of fish they had was good enough for him. This gentle meeting with did so much to ease the tension and calm the nerves. Emotions were beginning to return to normal. Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? He asked to reassure them that everything is okay. Jesus is accepting his disciples as his disciples again not reproaching them for having abandoned him. After we sin, Jesus wants us to return to him as quickly as possible. Now that the disciples have received the forgiveness of Jesus, he gives them a mission. We hear in the gospel, thus it is written that the Messiah would suffer and rose from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to those things. Notice, Jesus expects people to repent of their sins in order to receive forgiveness. When we sin, our natural reaction is to repent of our sins. We want to do penance to make up for having abandoned Jesus. As Peter said in the first reading, repeat, therefore, repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The first repentance is to make a firm decision not to commit that sin again. We are only sincere in our sorrow for sin if we realize or really decide to put Jesus first and not to abandon him again. 
When we repent and are genu genuinely sorry, we want to return to Jesus and not sin again. And he forgives us in the sacrament of re reconciliation. How is it that we can receive forgiveness from Jesus? He paid the price for our sins by his passion and death on the cross. The forgiveness of Jesus flows from the cross. Remember the words of Jesus during the Last Supper that we hear at every Mass at the con consecration. This is my body, which has been given up for you. This is the cup of my blood. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. It is from Jesus on the cross that forgiveness comes to us. <coughs> Notice also that in our gospel today, as Jesus restores the broken relationship with his disciples, he shows them his wounds and his hands and feet. It is the pain Jesus suffered from those wounds that heals the disciples and heals us from our sins. When our sins cry out to the Father for punishment, the passion, death, and the wounds of Jesus cry out to the Father to forgive us instead. So in the second reading we heard, my children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the expiation for our sins and not for our sins only, but for those of the world. There is judgment and our sins are evidence against us, but Jesus pleads on our behalf and we could have no better attorney than Jesus to plead our case. Jesus' wounds are the defense on our behalf so that we can gain forgiveness. When we sin, Jesus does not want us to remain in guilt. He wants to heal a broken relationship, broken by our abandoning him in sin. Therefore, after sin, we always want to return to Jesus in repentance and sorrow. He says to us, Peace be with you. From his wounds, we receive forgiveness in the sacrament of reconciliation as the priest in the name of God absolves us from our sins and then says, go in the peace of Christ. Amen.